60 years ago, our grandparents immigrated here and planted so many fruit trees. Beginning the immense food forest that we live in today. They planted tropical fruit everywhere. Bananas, kiwis, mangoes, star fruit, guavas, avocados, and lychees. Years later, our parents took over caring for the food forest and planted even more. Now we realize that it's our turn. And over the past few years, we've been planting new orchards, gardens, and trees. We turned the duckyard into an orchard. We planted figs, avocados, limes and lemons. We're so excited by how much they've already grown. The ducks spend their days finding bugs and protecting the trees from pests. We also let the sheep into this paddock to eat grass and fertilize the soil with their poop. Working together with the animals has made us realize the importance of imitating nature in the food forest. Us, the trees, the ducks, the sheep, the insects, and the soil are all connected and circular. And if everything works in together, it can create a harmonic system that provides healthy food, healthy soil, and healthy animals. We've also been building a large flower and veggie permaculture garden. The ducks live amongst the flowers in their palace built from recycled materials. They poop in their pen and it falls to the ground and replenishes the soil. This is our first experience ever growing flowers and we've been learning so much. We've learnt through success and failures. We're learning to protect against the copious summer weeds, to protect against the naughty ducks that can eat the entire nasturtium patch in two minutes, and to protect the ducks from so many predators. And then my face. Our journey caring for the animals, the land and the food systems has sometimes been very overwhelming. The kiwi orchards are overgrown and need pruning, the sheep ate most of the bananas and the summer weeds seem uncontrollable. Last week, we faced a once in a thousand year flood disaster. And sometimes it feels like no matter how many steps we take forward, there's always something to knock us back. But this only makes us feel more energized and inspired to keep planting trees, to protect the environment from more disasters like this. You can support us and help us to plant more trees on our Patreon. We are so proud of every small step that we take and we are guided by each tree that was planted by those before us. They hold their stories and help us understand everything. It's the perfect season to transplant bananas, so we're honoring our family's stories by collecting banana suckers to replant in the garden.
The mountains and volcanic craters have rich soil that grows abundant fruit, and banana plantations fill the valleys. Our grandparents and parents were once banana farmers in these mountains, and in each reaching frond and growing fruit, we are reminded of their stories. Our grandparents moved here and became banana farmers, and these ridges were once filled with bananas, pineapples, and passion fruit. Our dad spent his childhood in the bananas, getting lost amongst the thick foliage and finding crystals in between each trunk. He was the youngest of six boys and always laughed about being forgotten deep in the thick valleys and having to find his way home through the dense bush. He would visit each neighbor along the way and eat dinner from every family, arriving home full of three meals but not telling anyone so that he could eat a fourth. He grew up to be a banana farmer like his dad and when he was our age, he spent his days propagating, planting and picking bananas. After school, our mum moved from her small country town up to the tropics, where she worked on many banana farms in the Queensland tropical heat. She spent a few years working from farm to farm and getting jobs on fishing boats as a cook. Between the land and the sea, she cooked for fishermen between tropical islands and the Great Barrier Reef, and she planted and sorted bananas in the humid heat. Our parents met on top of a waterfall and continued the farm story, planting so many more trees and fruit. They planted kiwi fruit and chocos and continued planting bananas and mangoes. In our childhood, we would help harvest all the fruit to sell at markets, stealing our fair share for snacks, of course. A few years ago, our dad died, and we realized that it's now our turn to continue the story of the farm, the fruit and the animals. Even though things can be overwhelming sometimes, we are so proud of every step we take and every day we learn more to live in harmony with nature. This ridge was once full of pineapples and today we still call it the Pineapple Ridge. We started this garden for our ducks as a safe yard for all the boys. It has come such a long way and we're working towards growing a huge permaculture garden full of flowers, veggies, and of course, banana plants. All bananas are technically kind of clones. They don't have seeds and instead each plant produces fruit and then dies while reproducing smaller versions of itself. These are called suckers or pups. Because each plant is a clone of each other, they are prone to disease, and in the 60s, the most popular variety of banana practically went extinct. Because of the more and more commercialized food system and the demands for bananas to be in season always in all places of the world, bananas are now on the brink of another extinction. The productions of bananas are complex and raises so many issues from monocultures, sustainability, disease, and climate change. The fate of bananas gives a warning to the terrifying effects of monoculture farming and always reminds us to eat local and in season. Trash bags on his birthday that year. Tell me everything that you remember. I think my hair is getting thinner.
We filmed this video before the catastrophic floods. We knew these creeks as well as we know our own skin. Each boulder sat as it was since we bathed her as babies. Off by heart, we knew the path the water would take, which waterhole was always most full, or which boulder was best to catch the afternoon light as the seasons change. While studying nature, we always notice change, like the undulating waters after a storm, the way the water slows and turns bright blue as winter comes, or new trees and vines growing. But we never expected change like this, for every stone to have been turned and for massive boulders to have rolled so far downstream. It seems strange to focus so much on these changes to a creek, but the truth is that we know and love these creeks as much as our home or our body. Our neighbors all feel the same way, and we've spoken to women who have lived in these hills for generations, who swam and played in these creeks as children, and now they bathe their grandchildren in the same waters. But again and again, we hear the same story, that no one has ever seen a flood as devastating as this. We grieve the creek that once was, but we know that we will learn to love this new landscape too. We have noticed that where there are established trees and root systems alongside the banks of the creek, the devastation is less. All of the trees that we planted before the flood survived, and we are now so inspired to plant even more and to better understand riparian erosion and to prepare these soils for next time. Every day we move the sheep's paddocks. It keeps them healthy and lets us keep the grass down. Rotating their paddock lets them avoid worms and other parasites. We love our daily sheepy walks and so do they.
We also lock the ducks up in electric pens every night. This keeps them safe from any predators by giving a small zap to warm them away. They love the safety and waddle to bed every afternoon. The music in this video is by Fellow Hollow. They are a trio from Ohio, and their incredible music talks about what it means to lose someone. You can find their links in our description. Thanks for watching. You can support by liking, subscribing, or joining our Patreon. And we are so thankful to each of our patrons. You guys inspire us every day to keep working, planting, and hoping for a better future.